hope you all are doing good and staying safe at home. Um, I'm sure a lot of you all are happy because this was the last week of school for most of you all. So yay, y'all are finished. Um, no, home, no more homework. <laughs> um, I hope a lot of y'all were able to see the video that all the teachers made for y'all. You know, we really miss you all. And um, since the church is closed, we're not able to have children's church. However, um, we're still gonna be sending little videos for y'all to watch at home. Um, today, you will see me, but ev every week, it's gonna rotate between some of your teachers, so you, you'll be able to see them as well. Um, so, let's get started. Okay, so today's topic is called God Protects Us. So, what does protection mean? Protection means um, defend, guard, cover. So you can fill that in and that little phrase, God defends us, God covers us, God shields us. You know, he makes sure everything is okay with us. So why do we need protection in the first place? So we live in this world where there's um, evil, there's harm, there's sicknesses. Um, it's easy for us to get in danger in this world, right? So we need God's protection to help us from all the things of this world. So some examples of things that protect us here on earth are seatbelts, right? So seatbelts protect us from um, anything that may happen while we're driving. Um, another thing is car seats. You know, babies need to be in their car seats so that they may be protected from any accidents. Um, another thing would be shoes. You know, shoes protect our feet um, outside. It's sometimes it's very hot. You can't step on the on the ground because they'll burn your feet. So shoes protect our feet. Um, some people that protect us here on earth are parents. You know, they make sure um, everything is okay with us. Um, another person is our teachers. You know our police officers. They make sure um, to protect us in our everyday lives. So um, those are some examples of protection here on earth. Now in the Bible, God gives us a lot of examples of how he protected his people from harm, right? So um, one of the examples I can think of is Noah and his family. You know, um, no, uh, God protected Noah and his family when the flood came, you know, and how did he protect them? He told them to build an ark so that they can stay safe during the flood. Um, another example is um, Jesus' disciples, you know, he protected them in the boat whenever there was a storm, you know, he calmed the storm so that nothing would happen to them. So there's, those are just some examples of God's protection in the Bible. So today, what we're going to talk about is how God protects Daniel. So before we get to our Bible lesson, we're going to do a short little experiment, okay? So feel free to follow along, but of course ask your parents for permission and ask them for your, their help as well. Okay, so what we're going to need, we're going to need a bucket like this, a clear bucket filled with water. Ooh, hopefully it doesn't fall. <laughs> okay, see, there's water in this one. Okay, you're going to need two sheets of paper, clear paper like this something to write with, and a clear cup. Everyone should have items somewhat like this at home, okay? So, what we're gonna do first is, on the first paper, I want you to write your name, or you can write your family's name, you can draw a picture. For myself, I'll just do a little stick figure for this first one, okay? So here I am. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumble it up, okay? So this paper represents us, okay? So let's see what happens when this paper goes into this bucket. Now this bucket right here represents the world. It present, represents everything that is in the world, right? Like for example, what's going on right now? The coronavirus can represent any viruses, any sicknesses, any harm that's in the world. So let's see what happens when this paper goes into the water, right? Oh, I'm gonna need my napkin over here. Okay, when we take it out, oh no. Now, let's look at the paper. It's dripping wet, right? Now, it's easy to tear if I just pull it. Oh, you see, it tear, it tore. So, this is what happens when we go into the world without any protection. This paper didn't have any protection, right? It just went straight in just like that and came out soaking wet. So that's what happens when we go into a world, you know, that's full of sicknesses, that's full of um, evil, we just get 
consumed by it, as you can see this, right? And it becomes easy to destroy, right? So look at this, it's just easy to fall apart and it's not whole anymore, as you can see. So, um, like that. So now, let's put this paper aside, right? So this represents us without God, right? We're not whole anymore. So now, let's get the second sheet of paper. My hands are still wet, so let's dry them. So let's get the second sheet of paper. And on this paper, I want you to draw yourself again, or write your name, um, write your family's name. Let's see, I'm gonna put myself, and then I'm gonna draw myself with my family. I'll draw my dog in there too. Okay, I don't know how to draw very well, but there you go. I'll show you all. I'll show you my picture real soon. Okay, I'll draw my parents and my sister, and I'll draw Jim. Okay, so here we are, right? Here I am, here's Jim, here's my dog that looks like a cat, and here are my parents and my sister. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna crumble this paper up. Not very tightly, just enough, okay? Now, here's a clear cup, right? So this clear cup represents God. This is our protector, right? So when we place our lives in God, let's put the paper, the crumble the paper in there, okay? And let's just push it in a little bit. Okay, so this is our lives in the hands of God, right? We're all nice and safe in there, right? So if we turn it over, it doesn't fall. So let's see what happens to the paper when it goes into the world, right? Full of viruses, sicknesses, um, evil, full of things that can harm us. Let's see what happens. So let's put it in straight in, be very careful. Okay, so the cup is fully in the water. You see that, right? Okay, and there I am, there's me, Jim, my parents, my sister, um, and my dog. So let's see what happens to us when we go into this world covered by God. Let's take it out, let the water drip out. Now, take your paper out, and let's see how the paper is. Is it wet? No, is it dry? It is completely dry, right? Look, it doesn't even tear, because it's dry. So that's what happens when we go into the world protected by God. He keeps us dry and safe, right? So with that being said, we'll go into our Bible lesson. Okay, so during today's Bible lesson, I want you to think about the example we just did, okay? Um, today's lesson is going to be about how God protected Daniel in the, from the lions. So uh, there was this king who had 120 governors and, and those governors were in charge of different parts of the land and in charge of them were three administrators. So of those three administrators was Daniel, okay? Daniel was a very right man. He was just, he did his work with excellence, you know, um, he had excellent qualities. Um, everything about him was good. Um, there was, he didn't do any, any wrong. So the king saw that and he wanted him to be in charge of the whole kingdom. Well, not the kingdom, but uh, in charge of the governor and the, the governors and the administrators. So, um, what he did, he told Daniel that he was going to promote him to that position and the other man they became jealous you know they were like well why him and not me so what they did they started to think of ways to um, make Daniel look bad in front of the king so um, they all got together and started talking about oh have you seen Daniel do anything wrong have you and none of them could find anything wrong that he had done so they, okay so what they did they came up with an idea that they knew Daniel wouldn't um, be able to follow. So that idea was that they told the king that he should come up with a new law. And what that law was, was that for the next 30 days, everyone who is part of the kingdom should only pray to him. That means they could not pray to any other God or to any other man, right? So 
If they were to break that law, they would be punished by being placed into the lion's den, okay? Into a den that is full of lions that are hungry and vicious. So, um, at the time, the king was like, hey, that sounds like a good, a good law, so why not? Let's just do it, right? So, he signed it, and they put it in writing, and it was set. So, um, when Daniel heard about this, he what he did was that he went to his house like how he normally would he went upstairs he knelt down by the window where he normally would pray he knelt down and he prayed um, it says that he would pray three times a day so um, the Bible doesn't say that he prayed quietly when he heard the new law it doesn't say that he hid in the corner of his room to pray to God it said that he did what he normally does on a daily basis he prayed to God um, out in the open, right? So when the other men were walking by his house, they saw that, hey, look, Daniel's not following the law. So what they did, they were like, ah, we got him, right? So they ran to the king and they told him, king, so your law said that if they don't follow um, this new law, they would be punished by being placed into the lion's den, correct? And the king was like, yes, you're correct. So they told him, so, Daniel was not following it. We just caught him praying to his God. And um, King Darius was, um, he was probably shocked, right? Because uh, Daniel was someone that he he looked up to. Um, he was a trustworthy man. You know, he wanted to promote him to be in charge of all the other men. So when he heard that, he became sad because he didn't want to place him in the lion's den. But um, the other men were like, well, your law says you can't break it, right? So um, he didn't have a choice, and he told them, well, send him down to the lion's den. And um, they went down, and uh, let's read what it says that um, the king told Daniel. It says in um, chapter 16, I mean, uh, verse 16 of chapter 6 of Daniel says, So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually rescue you. And they placed a stone over him and um, they sealed it, right? The king sealed it with his own ring and the ring of his, um, of the other men. So that night, uh, the king went to his room and he, it says that he couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat. He didn't want anything to entertain him. You know, he didn't watch TV. I'm sure there wasn't TV back then, but he, um, he didn't have anything entertain him so um it sh that showed that he was worried about what would happen to this fearless leader this um righteous leader that he um knew which was daniel right so it says that as soon as the sun came up um the king ran down to the tomb and it said that he says um let's read it okay it says so at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. And so when he came near the den, he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? So what do you think? Was he rescued? Yes, right? Because we serve a mighty God. So it says that Daniel answered, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angels and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, in his sight nor have I done any wrong before you, O oh, king. So that showed that um, God protected him, right? He sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. Imagine being in a room filled with lions who are hungry and they just see you as a big piece of chicken, right? They're like, mm, let's eat him up. But um, God told them, nope, you're not going to do that, right? He sent the angel to shut their mouth. And um, that's how we see how God protected Daniel there, right? So just like this little experiment we did, right? This was the lion's den. And this was God's protection. And here's Daniel, right? Daniel is in here. All among all the lions. Let's see. And there he goes inside protected by God, and no matter what happens, doesn't matter how hungry these lions are, nothing is going to happen to Daniel because he is protected by God. Let's see. Let's see if the paper stayed dry. And 
and it did. You see? God protected him, just like he protects us every day from the things of this world, right? So with everything that's going on right now, um, don't be afraid, don't worry, just know that God is with you and he's protecting you every step of the way. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed today's lesson. Um, if you were able to try this, I hope um, it worked for you. And if not, um, we can try it another time when we're back at our um, church. Um, I can bring it and we can try it, okay? So y'all have a good one. I miss y'all and stay safe. Thank you, Jesus, for every child that is listening to this lesson, Lord. I ask that you touch their hearts, allow them to understand that you are with them and that you are protecting them and their families every day of their lives. Amen.